Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Glad that you're joining on this week's Coffee with the Principal. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, be with me this morning. Glad you're here. Uh, a, a couple of things uh, I'm going to share going on, some, some new things, but a lot of repeated things. So uh, I don't think this will be very protracted today. But as always, there'll be, quite, there'll be time for for Q and A at the end, uh, if there's any questions that folks have uh, about any of the things that I mentioned or or want to uh, ask about anything going on, we are at the end of April. That is hard to believe. Uh, Monday will be May, um, and so this year has gone by in a flurry. Um, so we are we are getting there. All right. As a reminder, uh, you've joined the meeting muted. Feel free to use the chat box as needed. Uh, we're recording the meeting. We encourage you to leave your video on, but you certainly don't have to. Uh, and then, you know, feel free to use the chat box or the, or the raise hand feature at the end. We're always a small group, so folks can uh, ask questions at the end. All right. Um, just a reminder, uh, if you missed our Coffee with the Principal two weeks ago, it was a really, really uh, good one. Uh, it was led by some folks, or we had some special uh, guests on from Student Health and Human Services, um, who came and did a parent presentation on bullying. They're going to different schools in the district and, and doing that. They also came to our our, our PE classes, and we had three grade levels grade level assemblies. So uh, you can talk to your child about it. You can also see the recording of the parent meeting uh, two weeks ago. That is available at the link uh, in the chat, and you can always subscribe uh, to all these updates in there. Just as a reminder, uh, we're kind of given the uh, a bird's eye view of the, the next couple of uh, uh, weeks here at Katherine Johnson STEM Academy and in LA Unified. Um, there are only, after today, we, there are only six weeks left. Um, wow, that is, it's, it's, can't believe how fast it's going. So this week, uh, the week of April 25th, uh, all of our students took something called the ICA. It stands for the Interim Comprehensive Assessment. It's it's an ELA test and it's a math test. It doesn't affect their grades. It doesn't it doesn't you know follow them on their transcripts in any sort of way. It's just an internal, uh, essentially a practice assessment for the end of the uh, the year tests that we do in mid May. Um, the interim comprehensive assessment and what it does is it assesses uh, students on all of the on on the most prominent uh, grade level standards, both in ELA and mathematics. And then our teachers uh, can look at the data and it can let us know how to support particular students um, in, in, um, in their particular course areas, but it also allows us to see patterns of, as to where uh, classes or subgroups of students are at as a whole. And so it allows us to tailor instruction to meet those individual needs. So uh, our students did that this week. Today, during our professional development, uh, after the students leave, uh, our teachers come together and we actually look at those results and adjust our instructional plans based on them. Uh, so we'll be reviewing our yearly content um, uh, this coming week and then the week after. And then starting May 15th, uh, that's when we will do our end of the year State of California uh, test administration in both ELA and math. Uh, for eighth graders, that'll include science as well. Um, and again, ELA and math are the ones that, you know, we look at and, and schools look at uh, to determine um, you know, where students land in terms of mastery of the standards. Uh, and then the last two weeks of school, May 30th and June 5th, uh, our students uh, do their presentations of learning. For sixth graders and seventh graders, this is asynchronous. They do them digitally. For eighth graders, they do them live in our conference room right next door uh, to a group of panelists that include some professionals from the area, but also will include some parents uh, and families. And so I'm actually, be, we'll be reaching out in the coming week uh, with a link for families to sign up on um for particular slots, if you're willing and able to help us be a panelist for some eighth grade presentations, we would love to have you. So uh, last, those will be the last two weeks of school. The last day of school is Friday, June 9th. Uh, that will be a minimum day. Um, our calendar, as always, I'll put the link in the chat right here. Um, slash KJ2223, yeah, pretty sure that's right. Uh, 
The last day of school is June 9th. That is a minimum day. School is dismissed at 123 at that day. Uh, that's also the same day as our eighth grade culmination, uh, which will take place at 245 uh, that day here on the front lawn of the school. It'll be a, a great ceremony. It is every year. It's one of our favorite parts of the year. All right. Uh, just some cool things that have been going on in classrooms uh, recently. Uh, this was this was probably about two, three weeks ago. Our students uh, in their STEM classes uh, worked on an egg drop. And so students had to come up with different designs for um, contraptions that uh, would protect an egg uh, as it falls from uh, the the if you can see they dropped it from the top of the stadium or the the top of the the football field bleachers uh, it was probably a drop of about uh 30 35 feet or so so uh some of those designs were excellent in doing that we've also had a bunch of field trips and so this was a field trip taken uh with sixth graders to uh, the Getty, and that was a, a really, uh, this one even the Getty Villa, um, and where the students learn about ancient Greek and ancient Roman civilizations and all of the the, the cool things and artifacts that, that were a part of that. Um, our seventh and eighth grade girls are on a field trip today as we speak to empower uh, the Girls to Greatness Summit, so we're excited uh, about that. Additionally, our um, our girls are do, or actually all our students, boys and girls, uh, are doing. I think this was, I think this was sixth graders. They were doing three um, uh, D modeling and design in their classes, and so uh, this was a, I think, a kitchen or a restaurant that one of our students designed on the on the left, and then of course on the right because we're all fans of the nineteen nineties. One of our students designed a teenage mutant ninja turtles. If my memory serves me correctly, that looks like Raphael. All right. Um, and then lastly, uh, this week, uh, actually yesterday, uh, Ms. Casimir, Ms. Dunklin, and I uh, got to go visit uh, the Tiger Woods Learning Lab down in Anaheim. Um, the Tiger Woods Learning Lab is a is a center that's funded by the Tiger Woods Foundation that that uh, acts as a place where students can come and do week long sort of uh, day camps um, during the school year while their teachers uh, engage in professional development all around STEM and, and things like that. Um, the reason why we went is because this organization, the Tiger Woods Foundation, is one of the, the partners in developing um, something called Lulu's Place. And Lulu's Place, I think I've mentioned on here before, Lulu's Place is, is going to be a multi-million dollar um, youth center that's going to be built just a couple hundred yards of us south of uh, south of Westchester High School, um, near St. Bernard's High School, um, on some vacant land right there. And it's gonna it's a partnership between the Tiger Woods Foundation, the American Tennis Association, um, and a couple other organizations. And it's gonna be a youth center that's focused on athletics, soccer, tennis. Um, I think there's gonna be a softball field. Um, but also there's they're they're gonna have um, a learning lab from the Tiger Woods. Uh, foundation uh, built there as well uh, to focus on STEM. So that we're, we're shooting for, uh, they haven't even put shovels in the ground yet, uh, but we are hoping that that'll be uh, up and running uh, in about two years or so. So uh, uh, are certainly not our eighth or seventh graders this year, but uh, potentially our sixth graders and definitely their younger siblings will be able to take advantage of that cool partnership. So um, that is coming up soon. All right, um, we are going to be having Malik's uh, come and uh, do a book fair for us uh, in the month of May. Um, Malik's is a great organization. Uh, they're a bookstore. They have a couple brick and mortar stores. One of their stores is in the Fox Hills Mall, uh, Century City, or sorry, what's it called now? Uh, no, it's Culver City. Westfield Culver City, that's what it's called. It's Fox Hills in my mind. Um, that'll be May uh, 11th. So we're excited to, to support them, but also they're a very cool store. So they have a little trailer um, and they come and, and, and set up a book fair outside. It's also the same day as our, uh, our open house night for, for families to come and see the work that students have been working on uh, throughout the year. So um, yeah, that's coming up soon. Last, oh, two, two last things and then we're done. Um, just a reminder, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who have signed up to participate in um, 
um, providing some snacks, some goodies, or maybe even lunch for uh, some of for, for our teachers uh, next week. Uh, if it's not too late, if you still want to get in the action, there is a link right there that you can go to um, to to fill out for how you might want to participate. But again, thank you, thank you, thank you for all those who you who've already signed up. Um, please make a note of your date so that uh, and let me know if 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 you need any, you know coordination, like what time do I drop it off, you know, things like that. Class Dojo is a really good way to get a hold of me, or you can call the school. Um, last last announcement is this. Um, I have uh, mentioned this a couple times. I think we, we started this in the fall, is tutor.com um, is an online tutoring service that kids have access to 24-7 uh, for free because LAUSD pays for it. And if their school district pays for it, it's totally worth using. Um, I have been told that kids will also continue to have access to this even during the summer. So the so from my understanding, LA Unified has extended the contract with tutor.com um, in, into next year. So kids will have it next year, but I also understand that they will have access to it over the summer as well. Anyway, uh, we have invited or I have invited a rep from tutor.com to join me next week at next week's coffee with the principal um, to really present of to really present the 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 topics and how to access that. So that is don't miss next week. Um, I think it'll be at nine. I might have to make it a little bit later due to a scheduling conflict, but I will put the time on Class Dojo. And as, al as always, I will record the meeting. So in case you're not able to, to make it, I can do that. All right, that is that is it for, for us. Um, I'll mention this again. Um, maybe most of you have already done it. I know I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but uh, if you have a, you know, now is, now is kind of the time when families are, Families who have waited this long uh, to figure out where they're going to send their fifth grader to school are really, you know, tur turning on the, the search wheels of their mind and, and looking for schools. And so one of the places that they look at schools is something called Great Schools, which provides information about all sorts of schools, private, public, charter, um, all sorts of schools. And one of the things that it includes is parent family reviews of schools. So if you have an experience that you'd like to share about Catherine Johnson STEM Academy, I invite you to go to that link and just take a few minutes and, and put that in. And that, that will be helpful uh, for us so that other families uh, who also want a small STEM-based education can, can, can find us. All right. With that said, I'm going to stop the share. And I see there's a question in the chat, which I'll I'll start with, and then we will uh, we'll see if there are any other questions. So the question is, is testing the whole week of May 15th, and what do we do if we know our child will miss one of those days? Great question. So we are scheduling testing um, to take place in the mornings of those two weeks. So May... Actually, you know what? Let me let me go back to this slide because uh, it may be helpful to look at this. Yeah, um, here we go. Great question. Yeah, sometimes it's helpful to look at a particular slide with that. All right. So yeah, these two weeks uh, we're testing. We're still working out some of the details, but basically the schedule will be um, from like nine to or like 8 45 when kids get there we'll settle them in and then we'll start testing you know at nine and we'll go from nine till lunchtime and after lunchtime we won't do any more testing that day um we want to keep it short and measurable the other thing is we're only going to test four days each week so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday we're not going to test on Friday or we're not scheduling to test Friday the 19th we're not scheduling test to test uh may 26th next thing i'll say is if at all possible if you can avoid you know any appointments or scheduling that would you know pull your kid out of testing that would be super helpful however if there is a situation that just can't be avoided it's not the end of the world uh and and your child misses one particular day due to unforeseen illness or 
you know, conflict that you just can't get out of. That's not the end of the world. Uh, you're, we will have a makeup session for their, for your, for your child or for, you know, uh, other students who, who missed that particular day. Uh, in very, in, in all likelihood, what we'll probably do is say, for example, I don't know, they missed Wednesday, May 17th, and they were absent from school that day. Um, we would probably have them do their makeup session um, on Friday. Um, when we get towards the end of that second week, we may start using afternoon sessions uh, to do to do makeups if we need to. But again, your child will have an opportunity to to do um, a makeup session uh, for testing. So it's not the end of the world if they miss it. Great question. Might there be any other questions? All right. Well, with that said, uh, thank you again so much for joining me today. I wish you a very happy Friday, a wonderful weekend, and uh, with six weeks to go, we'll see everyone on Monday. Have a great day.